the truth of Holodomor. The starvation started in the spring of 33, sometime near the end of February. A terrible starvation started because they were putting the squeeze on us. Even if someone went to get something, they'd then take it all right away. Even if someone scrounged up a handful of millet, tossed it in water, and boiled it in a pot, they'd smash that pot and throw it into the yard. This is one testimony of many Ukrainians who suffered through Holodomor, the man-made famine of 1932 to 1933 that saw millions of people die due to instructions laid out by Joseph Stalin, the head of the USSR. Initially, historians argued about whether or not the famine was deliberate or an unfortunate consequence of Stalin policy. This is largely due to the fact that for years after, documentary sources were unable to include information directly from Ukraine. The information that did manage to make it to the rest of the world was on the lips of eyewitnesses or foreigners, such as journalists and diplomats, who had seen the truth of Holodomor for themselves. In fact, the leading authority on Ukraine, Stanislav Kluczynski, changed his views rapidly following the decades after Holodomor, as more information came to light. Now certain it was a deliberate attack on the Ukrainian population by Joseph Stalin in an attempt to bring them to heel. While famines had already existed in Ukraine in the early 1930s, Kolchitsky came to recognize the difference between these and Holodomor, referring to it as genocide, as 1932 to 1933 had a good harvest. Stalin had long since felt that the USSR relied too heavily on peasant farmers for grain acquisition and to feed the nation, and sought to end this reliance through a system called collectivism, a concept he launched in 1928 after publishing an article regarding the subject in the Pravda newspaper. Collectivism wasn't a new concept for the USSR, but Stalin definitively put it into force during his regime. Collectivism can be simply described as the removal of individual ownership of farms and property, instead assimilating it into a larger collective, stripping Ukrainian farmers of their autonomy. To further alienate and differentiate the farmers, Stalin started to once again use the word kulak in referring to them, a term that had vanished from public use some years earlier. His plan, as revealed in a speech on December 27, 1929, was threefold. Stalin intended to divide the kulaks into three categories and work to eliminate the class as a whole. The first, recognized as actively hostile, i.e. they withheld grain, were to be handed over to political police and sent to concentration camps while their families were deported. The second, the most prosperous kulak households were to be deported, and the third group were allowed to remain but were instead given the worst land to farm. The farmers soon found their property and crops confiscated, quickly failing to meet the harsh quotas imposed by Stalin. These were just the first steps of collectivization, policies that meant grain, livestock, and property were seized, and those deported, often to places like Siberia, were packed by the thousands onto trains with no food or water. Animals and people died as Stalin established impossible to obtain quotas, leading fanatic followers in the forms of local police of the regime to seize the remaining food and water from accused kulaks, leaving them to starve. As the peasants attempted to flee Ukraine, Stalin stonewalled them, creating a blockade that prevented them from leaving famine behind and blacklisted entire regions to prevent them from receiving any aid from in or outside of the USSR. His campaign of misinformation meant that very few outside of the Soviet Union, or indeed Ukraine itself, had little idea how truly devastating things had become. It is important, however, as both Dushnik and Graziozzi acknowledge, to separate the 1933 Holodomor from earlier spontaneous famines that occurred in the Ukraine in 1930 and 31, and indeed across the whole of the USSR, the key difference being the change in human response. The earlier famine of 1932-33, referred to as the All-Union Famine by Kulczynski, was still caused by Soviet policy and the seizure of grain. However, it was across all USSR nations, and a result of Stalin's grain appropriation, leaving peasants with nothing of their own and driving them into cities where they then died. The historian calls this a case of insufficiency, whereas Holodomor is more strictly defined as a case of absolute starvation due to USSR actions such as requisitioning all provisions and barricading peasants in their towns and villages. And so, we return to January 1933, mere days after Stalin announces his collectivism measures and plans to eliminate the Kulak class. 
Every household was to be searched and any food provision seized, something described in multiple accounts from those who experienced it. Brigades were organized in every village that had a village council, and these brigades went around to the collective and individual farmers and took everything until nothing was left. If they found a handful of millet, they took it. If they found a handful of pumpkins, they took them. This once again highlights the key difference between Holodomor and earlier famines, where once grain was taken, now everything was under the same pretense, leaving the Ukrainians with quite literally nothing. In desperate attempts to get the sustenance any way they could, villagers often were forced to eat soup or porridge made from frozen herbs and rotting potatoes, snails, goose feet, or even just the leftover shells of sunflower seeds. With no other option, where they were not blockaded, people tried to flee to the cities in the hopes that more food would be available. But it was not just physically Ukraine that was blockaded. In these years, very little information made its way in or out of the country, with the rest of the world oblivious to the millions of people impacted and starving due to Stalin's policies. Any rumors of starvation were quickly quashed as vicious anti-Soviet propaganda and denied. The world would have been totally oblivious had it not been for the actions of the Welsh journalist Gareth Jones. In 1933, he snuck into Ukraine and returned to break the truth of what was happening there to the world. He wrote, Everywhere was the cry, There is no bread, we are dying. In the train, a communist denied to me that there was a famine. We are waiting for death, was my welcome. But see, we still have our cattle fodder. Go farther south, there they have nothing. Many houses are empty of people already dead, they cried. Two years later, Jones was dead, murdered on an assignment in China and Japan. It's long since been suspected that this was no coincidence, as in the words of David Lloyd George, Mr. Gareth Jones knew too much. But in Ukraine, little changed, as the world argued the truth of his words. In the cities, people lined up for food in lines that had no sustenance at their ends, dying where they stood in the street. Polish council in Kiev and Kharkiv reported policemen picking up the dead and dying, sending the worst to die from lethal injection, and children who experienced daily raids from the adults in charge, leaving the young to starve. One of the worst and darkest side effects of Holodomor was the measures those still alive were forced to go through to survive. The worst of all, perhaps, being cannibalism. Allegedly something that was more common in rural areas, cannibalism became somewhat widespread during the Stalin-made famine, with enough eyewitness reports to corroborate the legitimacy of claims of its occurrence. This is further backed up by a 1933 August intelligence report stating prisons were full of cannibals across the cities of Ukraine. The truth is, we'll probably never know the real number of deaths due to Holodomor, thanks to the strict propaganda machine of the USSR and the banning of even the word famine. Estimates have increased as more sources have come to light, but historians place these guesses anywhere between 5 and 11 million people, a number that brings Holodomor in line with the later Nazi Holocaust.